Nightline begins now with me, Liana Hassanel. The top stories. Malaysia confident of avoiding recession despite global headwinds. And heavier punishment awaits unethical members of parliament. Good morning. Malaysia is confident of achieving positive growth and avoiding a recession this year, despite having to navigate through global headwinds. Even though the country's economic growth this year was projected to be moderate compared with 2022, International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Tunku Zafrul Abdul Aziz said he was optimistic that Malaysia would not face a recession. Datuk Sri Tunku Zafrul said this was based on projections by Bank Negara Malaysia, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank that Malaysia would continue achieving positive economic growth in the 3 to 5 percent range. The International Trade and Industry Minister noted that the definition of a recession is two successive quarters of negative gross domestic product GDP growth. He, however, said that compared with growth achieved in 2022, there will be some moderation. As such, he said the country needs to take this opportunity to ensure all of its engines of growth keep firing, especially in terms of trade and investment. In 2022, Malaysia's total trade surpassed the 2 trillion ringgit mark for the second consecutive year when it registered 2.8 trillion ringgit, with exports reaching 1.6 trillion ringgit, exceeding 12th Malaysia plan projections, and imports reaching nearly 1.3 trillion ringgit. Meanwhile, during his recent two-day visit to Pulau Pinang, Datuk Sri Tengku Zafrul said he held meetings with top state officials and industry players to discuss efforts to strengthen the industrial ecosystem in the state, as it is one of the leading investment destinations for the electrical and electronics and medical technology sectors. He said the country needs to attract high-quality investment that can provide jobs for the people and increase the national income adding that the country is also looking for foreign direct investment, FDI, to be translated into domestic direct investment, DDI. Domestic private spending is expected to be the main factor that would drive the country's economic growth in 2023, hence allowing it to avoid recession. The CEO of Centre for Research, Advisory and Technology, CREATE, Eng Yin Sin said while global trade would be hampered by the expected downturn in the US and Europe, the end of China's rigid COVID-19 restrictions would be a big boost for Malaysia's economy, as China is the country's largest trading partner. We are hoping to see a continued flow of capital investments into, the, into both the private and public sectors, especially in the manufacturing and services sectors at the forefront of the public sector. We are also anticipating that the government will focus more on upgrading public infrastructure and amenities. Prime Minister YAB Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim is expected to visit China later this year. China being our largest trading partner and many of our mid-sized SMEs have business relationships with China. For example, the construction industries, we import a sizable amount of building materials from China. The tourism and services industries are also very much anticipating the arrivals of Chinese tourists. Tourist arrivals from China are actually very crucial towards the recovery of the Malaysian tourism and services related businesses, especially the hotels, restaurants, shopping, domestic transports, and also the airlines. The services sector shares of GDP is now bigger than that of primary commodities. And China being the most crucial country for the recovery of the Malaysian services and travel related industries. Yang di Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haji Azizah Aminah Maimunah Iskandaria on Sunday extended Chap Gourmet and Thai Pusam greetings to those celebrating the two festivities in the country. Their Majesties, in a post on the Istana Negara Facebook page, expressed hope that the Chap Gourmet Festival will bring happiness, prosperity, and peace to the Chinese community. Chap Gourmet is celebrated. According to the Chinese calendar, an important festival signifying the end of the celebration. 
Meanwhile, in another post on Istana Nagara's Facebook, their majesties also conveyed Taipusam greetings to Hindus in Malaysia. Taipusam is an important festival for Hindus, which is celebrated in the month of Thai, the 10th in the Tamil calendar. Also wishing Hindus in Malaysia a happy Taipusam on Sunday was Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. In extending his greetings, the Prime Minister urged Malaysians to strengthen unity and harmony for the sake of the beloved nation. In a post on his Facebook on Sunday, Datuk Sri Anwar said the various celebrations and diverse culture in Malaysia are strong grounds for the Malaysian community to get to know each other and build an understanding of the country's plural society. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamadi, who is also Rural and Regional Development Minister, said the excitement of the Taipusam celebration in the country is a reflection of the nature of the Malaysia Madani society, which is open and respectful of one another. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadilah Yusuf, who is also Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister, also wished Happy Taipusam to Hindus in the country. In a post on Twitter, he hoped that the people would continue to preserve unity, harmony and instill mutual respect, which is the core of the country's prosperity and well-being. The Taipusam Festival was celebrated on a grand scale across the country on Sunday after two years of muted celebrations due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Sri Subramanya Swami Temple in Batu Caves saw a sea of people celebrating the festivities in a colourful and lively atmosphere, with thousands of devotees carrying kavadi and palkudam or milk offerings to pay homage to Lord Murugan. Tahun sangat crowd. Kita tak ta ingin macam ini crowd. Beramai-ramai orang. Two years eh, kita miss. But this year very so happy. Sangat suka hari ini. Uh, kita punya sembahyang pun. Kita apa ingat dalam hati semua kita punya murugan ada. Lepas dua tahun COVID. COVID uh, this year sangat meriah lah. Sangat meriah. So orang pun ramai. So this is a happening lah. Uh, so enjoy lah. The festival is an opportunity for devotees to offer prayers and participate in a procession, which is the highlight of the celebrations. And on Sunday, the procession was accompanied by music, dancing and other festivities, making it a lively affair that is not to be missed. Tourists also took the opportunity to enjoy a unique cultural experience as they witnessed the vibrant and colorful annual type of some celebration. It looks amazing. I'm from Sweden, Stockholm. I see a lot of people. I see this uh, big, uh, I don't know what the name is, but this, I really like the view here and uh, all the people around with the music. It's a very nice place. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, enjoyable. Enjoyable. So relaxing. Also present were Human Resources Minister V. Siva Kumar and MIC Deputy President Datuk Sri M. Saravanan. Other dignitaries at the Taipusam celebration were U.S. Ambassador Brian McFeeters, High Commissioner of Mauritius J. Gubardun, and Deputy High Commissioner of India Subashini Narayanan. It was reported that 1.6 million devotees and people were expected to throng the four-day itinerary of Taipusam events beginning Friday. Meanwhile, in Pulau Pinang, thousands of devotees wearing bright orange-yellow attire to symbolize purity began flooding Jalan Kebun Bunga in Georgetown from as early as 4 a.m. They then paraded for two kilometers to the Tanir Malai Sri Balatandayu Tapani Temple, the famous shrine at the base of a waterfall. Kesimewaan tahun ini kita tengok lebih ramai orang dan juga kita tengok kawadi itu lebih banyak. So estimated. Uh, to see around 2 million people and uh, we're going to see that from morning till noon you'll be seeing around uh, 2,000 kawadis. After 2 o'clock you'll be seeing more than that until night. Lah. I like to see Chai Pusam, uh, the devout uh, religious uh, celebration is uh, very amazing to me how uh, strict and dedicated they are and just the colors, the lights, the sounds. It's interesting to observe their culture and the religion. So I came with my 17-year-old granddaughter Lily I used to live in Penang several years ago, and this is the third time I've been to Taipusam. In Johor, the Taipusam celebrations were centered around the Sri Subramanya Temple, 
where thousands of devotees gather to offer their prayers and participate in the procession. Apart from the procession, the celebrations also featured cultural performances, food stalls, and other festivities. Several parliamentary reforms, including heavier punishment on unethical members of parliament, will be implemented to ensure that the lawmaking institution is respected. Dewan Rakyat Speaker Datuk Johari Abdul said to achieve this, he plans to impose tough measures against elected representatives who utter racist, insulting and gender discriminatory words. According to Datuk Johari, the reforms will also cover a proposal that the parliamentary session be adjourned by 8.30 p.m. and not dragged until midnight or early next morning. Also set to change is the dress code for MPs, who will no longer be required to wear neckties. The option to wear bate every Thursday will be continued. He said he also intends to propose that some important special select parliamentary committees be upgraded to permanent committees, especially those related to environmental issues and corruption. The special select parliamentary committees will also be empowered to help the relevant ministries in making major decisions. He added that parliamentarians who utter racist, insulting and gender discriminatory words in the Dewan Rakyat and Dewan Nagar sitting will not only face the consequences of being expelled from the assembly, but also slapped with a 1,000 ringgit fine. The move was deemed necessary, considering some members of parliament continuously use vulgar words in the Dewan Rakyat without any sense of guilt or shame, with some of them aimed at the speaker, the deputy speaker or other parliament members. Datuk Johari also revealed that a special committee will be formed to monitor the MP's conduct during the sitting. The committee will have a guideline that the lawmakers can refer to, including statements deemed as racist, insulting and sexist. Aside from imposing a fine, those involved could also be brought before the Privileges Committee to face the maximum penalty of six months suspension from Parliament. The recent price hike of vegetables is only temporary due to the flood season. Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Minister Datuk Sri Salahuddin Ayub said Malaysians should stay calm amidst reports that the prices of certain types of vegetables had increased more than double due to erratic weather conditions. Datuk Sri Salahuddin said the country can import vegetables to meet local demand in the case supply is not sufficient, as the approval permit is no longer needed to import vegetables. Last Wednesday, the Consumers Association of Pulau Pinang, CAP, said prices of several vegetables had skyrocketed by more than 160 percent last month. It added that several retailers, distributors and wholesalers had also warned that prices of vegetables might go up in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, Cameron Highlands Vegetable Growers Association Secretary Che E. Mong said harvests and the quality of the vegetables had been dropping due to the year-end monsoon season. Che said the types of vegetables which are expected to see a price hike of between 20 percent and 30 percent were tomatoes, cucumbers, chilies, beans, capsicum and selected leafy vegetables. Still to come on Nightline, former military ruler of Pakistan dies in Dubai.
Pakistan's former president, General Pervez Musharraf, has passed away from a prolonged illness at the age of 79. He breathed his last in a hospital in Dubai on Sunday morning. The remains of Musharraf will be flown back from the United Arab Emirates to Pakistan on a special flight after his family submitted an application to do so. The former leader, who had been living in self-imposed exile in Dubai since 2016, seized power in a military coup in 1999 and appointed himself president in 2001. While remaining head of the army, Musharraf continued to lead Pakistan as president until 2008, when he suffered defeat in the polls. When he returned in 2013 to try to contest the election, he was arrested and barred from standing, charged with high treason and was sentenced to death in absentia. The decision, however, was overturned less than a month later. He left Pakistan for Dubai in 2016 to seek medical treatment and had been living in exile in the country ever since. He had survived numerous assassination attempts and found himself on the front line of the struggle between militants and the West. Let me right away say that Pakistan has taken a considered decision. Pai Tong Tarn Ong Ing Shinawatra, the youngest daughter of Thailand's former prime minister, emerged as the most popular choice as candidate for prime minister among voters in the bellwether province of Korat. Sampled voters in the northeastern province also preferred Pu Thai MP candidates for both constituency MPs and those on the party lists to be allocated by proportional representation. Statistics show that 37.8% of the votes favoured Pai Tong Tarn as Prime Minister and 48.4% favoured Pu Thai party members as constituency MPs. The poll was conducted through January 30th till February 3rd on 1,500 eligible voters of various levels of education, occupations and incomes in the province. In the coming general election, Nakhon Rachasima has 16 MPs up for grabs, the second largest number after Bangkok, which has 33 MPs. The House of Representatives consists of 500 MPs, 400 from constituencies and 100 from party lists. China has blasted the United States' decision to shoot down its unmanned high-altitude balloon, expressing deep dissatisfaction with the U.S.'s use of military force. The Foreign Affairs Ministry said that China will resolutely uphold the relevant company's legitimate rights and interests, and at the same time, reserving the right to take further actions and future responses. They stated that the Chinese side has verified the situation and communicated with the U.S. multiple times saying the airship unintendedly entered U.S. airspace due to force majeure, labeling the incident as a total accident. President Joe Biden issued the U.S. military on Saturday to shoot down the suspected Chinese spy balloon off the Carolina coast after it traversed sensitive military sites across North America. The presence of the balloon in the skies above the U.S. this week dealt a severe blow to already strained U.S. and Chinese relations that have been in a downward spiral for years.
the German Bundesliga. Union Berlin retook the lead for 24 hours at least after a narrow 2-1 victory over Mainz. Kevin Behrens put Berlin ahead in the 32nd minute as he finished off a curling cross from the right side. Marcus Invatsen leveled the score from the penalty spot in the 78th minute after a handball decision was made with the help of VAR. Substitute Jordan C. Bacu scored the winner for Oris Fischer's side to send them to the top of the table, two points ahead of Bayern Munich, who play at Wolfsburg on Sunday. Mainz are 12th in the table on 23 points. In another match, Kansas survivor Sebastian Haller scored his first competitive goal for Borussia Dortmund in a 5-1 thrashing of Freiburg. Nico Schlotterbeck gave Dortmund the lead after 26 minutes from a corner kick, just for Lucas Holler to draw level, seconds before the interval. Dortmund demonstrated their domination in the second half with four goals. Karim Adeyemi made it 2-1 three minutes into the second half before Sebastian Haller headed in Dortmund's third in the 51st minute. Julian Brandt made it 4-1 nine minutes after the hour mark with a spectacular long effort, with Giovanni Reyna curling in the host's fifth eight minutes from time for an emphatic 5-1 win. With the victory, Dortmund rose to third in the table with 37 points, two points behind leaders Union Berlin after 19 games. Seven arrested over irresponsible act. This and more after this short break. and Multimedia Commission MCMC and police have been asked to investigate a Facebook user over a post said to have defamed Prime Minister Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fadzil said the owner of the Sam MY Facebook account was found to have malicious intent and deliberately created a negative perception against the Prime Minister by sharing an old photo. In a post on Facebook, Fahmi said that the account used an old photo, which featured his friend Abdul Rahman Yusuf, who died on June 8, 2021. In the photo that was uploaded on Saturday, the account accused Datuk Sri Anwar and several other individuals, who was being served with two large trays of food for its neglecting its stand, which was asking for the public to contend with the menu Rahma, but at the same time, the Prime Minister was enjoying camel meat in Neverland. In Slangor, the body of a man believed to have drowned was found floating near the Sungai Buloh Sasaran Bridge in Jiram, Kuala Slangor on Sunday morning. Kuala Slangor District Police Chief Superintendent Ramli Kasa said the case was believed to be related to a police raid, which was conducted last Friday at a jetty near the area. He said they were alerted on the matter at 8.05 a.m. and the body was taken to Tanjung Karang Hospital for a post-mortem. 
Preliminary reports found that the 31-year-old man was one of two suspects who jumped into the river and swam to the other side when police approached the jetty. Investigations were still ongoing and the case had been classified as sudden death. Slangor Fire and Rescue Department Director Datu Nor Azam Kamis said efforts were underway to locate the second suspect, who was also believed to have drowned. Seven individuals have been detained in connection with a viral video showing a man throwing liquor bottles from a high-rise apartment in Kampung Baru onto an expressway. Dangwangi District Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Nur Delhan Yahya said four men aged between 20 and 23, along with three women aged between 23 and 31, were detained in the Dangwangi area on Saturday and early Sunday morning. During the arrest, police also seized a mobile phone and a set of clothing. All of those arrested were workers at an entertainment outlet. Two of those detained have been remanded until Tuesday. The case is being investigated under Section 268 and 336 of the Penal Code, as well as Section 14 of the Minor Offences Act. One of those detained tested positive for ketamine, and he is being investigated under the Dangerous Drugs Act. Meanwhile, ACP Nordelhan urged those who might have been affected by the incident to lodge a police report as soon as possible. Earlier, a 1 minute 43 second video, which was uploaded on TikTok on Thursday, had gone viral, showing a man throwing liquor bottles from a balcony of an apartment onto a nearby expressway. The bottle was thrown towards the highway on the Ampang Kuala Lumpur Elevated Expressway, or Akle, from the direction of Ampang towards the city centre, where there was a traffic congestion. A spectacular lantern fair has been underway in Zegong City of China's Sichuan province to usher in the Lantern Festival following the conclusion of the 15-day traditional Chinese Lunar New Year. With myriads of colorful lights outlining the structure of buildings and forming images of giant zodiac animal figures on the Chinese lunar calendar. Let's take a look at the dazzling illuminated lanterns as we wrap up Nightline this time around. I'm Lena Hasanel. Thank you for watching and stay safe, Malaysia.